Yes, Governor. You'd never guess there'd been any controversy over our new highway, would you? Well, from the size of this crowd, it appears that most of your people like the idea now. I'm sure most of them do. But I'll have to admit there are two or three folks out there I never thought would show up today. Even the head of our business improvement committee and the descendant of our founder are here today. Maybe they've finally seen the light. Jack, I sure hope your grandfather Connor's not turning over in his grave at what's happening here today. Well, if he is, Bob, it isn't because you and I didn't fight it all the way. Now that it's built, let's hope we have been wrong. Hello, Ralph. How's the dairy farm? Ah. Haven't we convinced you farmers yet? Nope. But what's done is done. Now if they'll just cut that ribbon, I can get on in the market and see if this road is worth the trouble it's caused me. gentlemen, it's with distinct pleasure today on the occasion of this important event to introduce to you the illustrious governor of our great state, the Honorable Theodore White. Thank you, Mayor Spencer, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I compliment you on this large gathering here today. It shows clearly that you, the people of Connersville, recognize the true significance of this ceremony to each and every one of you. You have had your discussions, even disagreements, about the highway in the public hearing room, on the streets, and in your homes. And I think you'll all agree that such discussions are healthy, for from them comes the majority will. We are gathered here today to dedicate a new highway that represents the majority will of the citizens of your community one segment of a great national system of highways that one day soon will connect the major cities of our land. You good people of Connersville are about to reap the benefits, almost certain Reap the fall. benefits. Let's hope that's the case, Governor. Let's hope the future proves that 18 months ago the right decision was made. 18 months ago. See if you can find Miss Rath on a seat, will you? We can't have the town's prettiest school teacher standing, can we? The meeting will come to order. This is a public hearing on the location of Improve U.S. Route 110 through Connor County in the vicinity of Connorsville. Since federal funds will be used in this project, the law requires a public hearing to discuss the economic effect of the proposed highway location. The law also says that ample notice of the hearing must be given so that all interested parties may appear and be heard. Judging from the size of this crowd here today, I would say that the state's given plenty of notice. Now, as your mayor, I've been asked by the State Highway Department to conduct this hearing. So let's get things started by turning the meeting over to Mr. Paul Jacobson, the State Highway Division Engineer, who will explain the state's proposal. Mr. Jacobson. 
Thank you, Mayor Spencer. For the record, I'm Paul Jacobson, speaking as division engineer for the State Highway Department. Now, as you know, the state is proposing to improve Federal Aid Route 110 in the vicinity of Connersville. This highway will be part of the interstate highway system created by the Federal Aid Highway Act of 1956. Now, to help you understand our proposal, I'd like to begin my presentation by showing you a short film that will give you some of the background of the current highway program. In this century, America has become a nation on wheels. We ride on wheels to work, to shop, to play, to go about any place we want to go. We depend on wheels to bring us the food we eat, the clothes we wear, the things we use. But when we depend on wheels, we depend also on highways and roads and streets for the wheels to roll on. And therein lies the challenge, building highways and roads and streets fast enough to keep up with the need. After World War II, the nation began developing a case of acute congestion that cost us millions of dollars a year in time, equipment, and lives. By 1956, there were more than 65 million cars on our roads, with 90 million forecast by 1975. Clearly, it was a time for national action. Congress responded with the Federal Aid Highway Act of 1956, providing the staggering sum of $51 billion to be spent by the states on highway construction by 1971. The most talked about phase of the act is the interstate highway system, a 41,000 mile network of our most important roads. Most of these roads will be four, six, even eight lane expressways constructed for through traffic. They will take the over the road driver from city to city, coast to coast at highway speeds even through large population centers. The Federal Aid Highway Act offers relief to the local driver, too, by giving him easy access to his home, work, stores, without interference from through traffic. Billions of dollars will be spent for city streets and expressways and for other highways of the primary system. The farmer, too, benefits directly from the billions allotted for the improvement of state and county highways, as well as the farm to market roads of our rural system. These new highways will have a far-reaching economic impact on the entire nation. They provide a heavy-duty link between all parts of productive America. They are a shot in the arm for cities that have begun to feel the impact of growing downtown traffic congestion. They open up vast new areas for suburban living, and they encourage industry to disperse out of city congestion. They stimulate business and create new jobs, particularly among the nation's road builders, who are fulfilling their tremendous responsibility with specialized equipment and modern techniques to build roads of the highest quality at the lowest cost. They stimulate business, too, in the industry supplying the road builders, manufacturers of heavy equipment, explosives, aggregates, steel, concrete, petroleum products, chemicals, and many others. They create other jobs and business opportunities in related fields, too. Car, truck, and bus manufacturing, as well as services catering to the motor traveler. Perhaps most important of all, they will save lives, bringing about at least a 50% reduction in the death rate on major highways. State highway officials charged with the responsibility of designing and building the new highway system are actually planning into every mile all the factors that mean safety. Controlled access, for example, the most important factor that promotes safety by eliminating crossroads, private entrances, traffic signals, and grade crossings. Properly planned median strips to separate traffic. Wider traffic lanes that take into account highway driving speeds. Added lanes to handle increased traffic volume. Wider, firmer, well-stabilized shoulders to provide adequate extra roadside lanes for emergencies. Smooth, easy curves and gentle grades to ensure adequate sight distances. And bridges and overpasses over railroad tracks and intersecting highways. Of course, all highway planners recognize the safety value of such factors as adequate lighting at critical points. Easy to read highway signs. 
Modern electronic equipment, such as the type that turns on reduced speed signs in bad weather, or even removes ice from key spots automatically. Important, too, are such good maintenance practices as inexpensive full-scale ice removal with calcium chloride, drainage maintenance, and weed eradication. But the road to better roads is not easy. There are many problems, notably antiquated state laws left over from horse and buggy days, laws that must be brought up to date. Rising land prices, greatly increasing the cost of future highways unless the land can be purchased and set aside now, and the shortage of trained highway engineers. However, the solution to all the problems lies most of all in public understanding. For only when each citizen becomes better informed about his state's highway program, only when he helps develop the popular support so essential to highway progress, can the nation meet the highway challenge. So the better, safer roads of tomorrow will become the roads of today. That gives you an idea of some of the factors we considered in arriving at the recommendation under discussion today. Now, this is the highway system presently in Connor County. This is U.S. Route 110. The state proposes to improve U.S. Route 110 with a controlled access highway that'll be part of the interstate highway system. Present Route 110 will be widened from two to four lanes divided by a median strip and the alignment we brought up to present-day standards. Now, at this point, we propose leaving present Route 110 and bypassing the town of Connorsville. There will be easy, convenient access to and from the new highway with adequate signs. We also propose to improve that portion of present Route 110 that runs through Connorsville to widen the pavement from 18 to 22 feet and to correct the alignment in several places. We believe Route 110 offers the best, most economical path for the new interstate highway through Connor County. Relocating it elsewhere would mean excessive land costs, innumerable right-of-way problems, and greater construction costs. Now, our decision to make Route 110 a controlled access highway is based on these traffic count figures. About 8,000 vehicles use the present Route 110 through Connorsville every day. By 1975, we estimate 16,000 vehicles daily. Now, perhaps that explains why congestion is increasing every day on Main Street, and why the accident rate on Route 110 has become one of the highest in the state. Now, our traffic count points out another fact. Of the 8,000 vehicles that travel Route 110 each day, only 1,500 are destined for Connersville. The other 6,500 are merely passing through. Therefore, we're recommending that the new highway bypass the town in the belief that it offers the most advantages both to Connersville and to the state. From your point of view, it'll keep Main Street free of the excessive congestion caused by through traffic. It will relieve local people, especially children, of the hazards of through traffic. And it'll keep through traffic off the street in front of the new elementary school. From the state's point of view, it'll give through traffic a shorter distance to travel without getting tied up in business district traffic. It eliminates hazardous curves, and it costs less than buying the additional right-of-way necessary if we did go through town. 